Well, y'all, I think I have overindulged. I went out this morning, I picked some brown mustards, greens. I cooked them up. Then I went on and made some nacho mama cornbread. And then I decided, hey, what would be good with that? Some fish. So I fried some fish, some cod and some whiting. And then I was like, oh my God, you know what would go good with this? Grandma's sweet tea. So I made some of her sweet tea. So that's what this video is about from start to finish. It's going to be a long ride, but it's worth it. I just ate and I am, I've overindulged. I'm just sitting here with my grandma's tea and I don't know what I want to do with myself. I am, I, I went too far. I ate two pieces of cornbread, way too many greens and a couple pieces of fish. And man, oh, here we go. Follow me. Well, it's time for me to plant, excuse me, not plant, pick some mustards. They're a little bit holy, but they're good enough for me. There we go. Look at that, isn't that pretty? That's what I'm gonna cook today. So I'm going through these mustards and these are brown mustard greens. Um, the snails are thriving in my garden. That's number three. I thought I had knocked them all off, but that is why I'm gonna inspect them a couple of times to make sure I don't miss any. Don't want any extra protein in our mustard greens. So I'm just going through and look at them. They look good, don't they? But the, you know, Snails and other bugs, they eat through them if you don't spray them. That's how you know they're truly organic when you have a bunch of holes in your greens like this. You see, it looks like a, um, a bullet, bullet, bullet wound. And the plant has healed itself. It's brown on the inside. The plant, I mean, the snails have, I think it's the snails or the bugs have just eaten portions of this, but they left enough for me and him. I just won't let him know about it. <laughs> this is the reality of organic. This one has been around a while. I was like, you know, there's too many of them out here and I don't kill them. I take them and put them in the corner of a yard where there's a bunch of uh, debris, dead uh, limbs. So hopefully, the, you know, I don't try, I don't kill them intentionally. I just move them to another location. Just don't want them eating up my crops. So I take them to the far, far side of the yard. I don't know if that's a good thing to do, but that's what I've been doing. Yeah. So this is what it looks like. Sometimes you just get a little bit. I have quite a pile here though. Grabbed a couple of more leaves. Cause these boil down to almost nothing. So just looking at them, look at that. Look at the damage. That's why I've been going out every morning collecting snails and relocating them. They keep on them, relocate them to another life because this is too much for me. And I have worked really hard on this. <laughs> this one, look at it. I'm going to throw that out. That's nothing. There's nothing left of these. <sighs> Very little left. So put that in the sink. I'm gonna set my water. What's wrong, boy? I'm gonna set my water and um, soak them in the sink in some salt water. I get this tub ready. Okay, get some cold water. Collect them back up. them sit in this salt water for at least 20 minutes 
So I'll see you in 20. I'm going to fill this thing up and let them soak. See you in a sec. So I've let the um, greens sit for a little while. Let me get a pot out of here. I'm just going to wipe them off one by one. Break off these stems and pick off the sides. Put them in there. Make sure I inspect each one, rub the leaves a little bit, get that dirt off. These are coming straight from the yard. Y'all saw me pick them. <laughs> Make sure I check them out, wash them off real good, rub my fingers on it, pull all those leaves off. Drop the stem. Some of them barely there. Look at that. Okay, organic, I tell you. If the bugs don't want it, you shouldn't want it. Bugs don't eat um, stuff that is sprayed with pesticides. And that's how you know. Nothing was used on these greens except the land, the dirt, and some water. And some seeds, of course. <laughs> Trying to get all my leaves off. I worked hard growing these greens. <laughs> some of these leaves have been around for a while. We're going to boil these for about two, two and a half hours. So they'll be soft at the end. And I'm gonna make some cornbread. Not your normal cornbread either. Wait till you see what I have in store. I have people requesting this cornbread. That and the fried cabbage, but we're not doing fried cabbage today. We're just gonna do some mustards. are mustards with some my mom used to call it fat back with some buckboard bacon and some Cajun seasoning slap your mama never fails <laughs> all right here we go pull those greens off make sure I get all of my leaves This is just the first wash, so remember I inspected them for, um, you know, escargot <laughs> prior to putting them in this water. The salt is going to get rid of any, I mean, I'm rubbing the leaves off, by the way, while they're underwater. The um, salt water is going to get rid of anything else, and we're going to wash it a couple more, wash it off a couple more times. So... Not to worry. 
God made dirt and the dirt won't hurt. Well, some of it will, so that's why we're washing this. We don't want any extra crunchiness. No, we don't. Pull that off. Oh, I can smell them. They are strong. That's good. Getting to the tender leaves. Always wash your greens. Even if you get them from the supermarket, especially if you get them from the supermarket, you don't know what those greens have been through. Look at this water. That's what I got off the greens in the first wash. So, always wash your greens. We're gonna dump this out. Wash it out. Fill it with water again, cold water. Take them out of this water, put it back in the pack, put it back in there, wash it off again. Dump this water out. Give this to the chickens. And I'm gonna wash this two more times. Minimum. I'll see you the next one. So I'm gonna I got my large frying pan in and we're gonna do everything here. I got my um homemade chicken broth boiling right here. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because it's boiling a little bit too high. I'm gonna turn this on high, take some bacon. This is just buckboard bacon. You could use regular bacon or you don't have to use bacon at all. You use turkey leg, you could just use the chicken stock, but I'm gonna put a little bit of bacon in here um, to add some flavor. Ah, I think that's enough, I don't want a lot. I don't want an overwhelming <laughs> pork taste in my, in my, um, I'm getting ready to say collard greens, in my mustard greens. So I got my knife out and I'm going to render as much fat as I can out of this piece of meat. Chop it up a little bit more. It's just gonna be little bits in there. Little bits of pork. As I said, you don't have to use pork, you can use turkey legs, or you just don't, you, you could do vegan. You don't have to do any of that. Just use the um, vegetable broth. I'm using chicken broth um, for this. So there we go. Got the large burner on high. Got a large onion out, taking the skin off. Got to move you closer so you can see. So, as a matter of fact, I'll move closer to you guys. How about that? So I have a large onion. And I'm just taking the skin off. I don't have a trash bin, but okay, I'll put it over there. Should have got a trash bowl, huh? Hindsight 2020. It's all right. 
My bacon is starting to fry a little bit. <clears throat> Get all the remnants off of here. I'm gonna do my tic-tac-toe, which is cut a couple of lines about midway. Go the other direction, cut a couple of lines about midway, just before you hit the end. Turn it on its side and cut across. And there you are, you already have diced onions. When you get close to the, where you think you stop cutting, just do it again. There's no rhyme, there's no re rhyme or reason to which way to cut. As long as you get little slits in it, it saves time and you're having to dice it. Then I just work my way around. Turn it over when I get to that part where it won't cut anymore. And then I just chop these up. Bacon bits around. I take a little bit of olive oil, drizzle it in the pan. Now, uh, olive oil has a low smoke point, so I gotta turn this flame down. Okay. Take my onions. Moving on to the garlic. Yay, garlic. So I ain't gonna fool with this garlic today. I have a garlic press and I'm gonna use it. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the garlic, smash it. I got three cloves here. Take the shell off. Well, I have four cloves. It looked like three cloves. That's fine. Take the shell off of all of them. The reason why you do it is because the shell comes off easy when you smash it. I'm going to cook this until it turns translucent. Translucent. Get it together, Jamaica. Get it together. All right. Got my junk pile right over here. this down stir it up okay where's my garlic press that is what I'm looking for If you don't know how to mince garlic, I suggest you get one of these. It's called a garlic press. You put the garlic in there, right? Close that little handle. And it has holes on the other side, right? And when you press it, the garlic just comes through. You see how it's coming through? That's what I'm going to do. Then you don't have to mince it. But you have an extra dish to wash, so. Get another piece of garlic. Press it with my garlic press. See that? Take my knife and shave it off. Get the third piece of garlic, put it in my garlic press. It has little teeth on the bottom of this thing, see? 
You take it, you take it, and you press it. And your garlic comes out the other side. Makes life simple. And then I just shave it off with my knife. You're gonna have some remnants of garlic. Just peel those off and throw it in your pot. Don't waste anything. Ooh, I smell the garlic. Smells good. All right, so we're gonna mix that up. All right. Yes, here we go. So the next thing I'm going to get is my Slap Your Mama. So here we are. I'm taking you down to a personal level on this frying pan. Okay. And of course, I'm gonna get some red, crushed red pepper flakes because I like my stuff hot. You do not have to use these, but I suggest you use some Cajun seasoning. You don't have to use Slap Your Mama either. Take this and mix it up a little bit. Balance it out. Go over here and get my greens. Drain them off a little bit. Got my greens right here in another pot. Got too many irons on the fire and I gotta slow this thing down because it's starting to get a little brown on me. I want it translucent, not burnt. So, I'm gonna go on my pot of, this is just uh, chicken broth. This pot is just chicken broth. I just boiled some um, chicken bones that we had left over. And that's what I use for my chicken broth. It's been boiling for hours. It looks better than the chicken broth you buy from the store. So I suggest you do it. Do not throw out your chicken bones. Strip them and use them in your, in your cooking. It saves you some time and some money because, okay, how much do I want? I want some slap your mama. So I'm gonna do about a half a tablespoon, put it in there, All right? Mix it in. Turn this up a little bit. And I'm gonna add my greens a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna layer this pot. Now oh, I got my season on there. I was like, what is that look, what is that? <laughs> I've washed these greens and I picked them, see? I picking them means you just break them apart into bite-sized pieces. That's picking, that's what picking means. So while I was washing them, I was breaking them down at the same time. Each time I washed them, I broke them down a little bit more. Take some more, slap your mama, about a quarter of a tablespoon, put it on there. Get some of my pepper, sprinkle that on there. Get some more greens. Put it on there, woohoo! This is gonna be delish. This pot's going back in the sink. There's nothing left on there. Put that there. Take some more slap your mama. About a quarter teaspoon. Get some pepper. Just because I like pepper. And put it on there. I'm gonna go ahead and get another two cups of chicken broth. And I'm gonna put my lid on, let this stuff wilt. Well, put my lid on and let this stuff wilt and then I'm gonna mix it up. I'll bring it back when I mix it up in a second. So it's been about, I don't know, five, seven minutes. This stuff is steamed down. What we need to do is go in there and mix it up. And while we're in this pot, we need to taste what our, you know, our flavoring. So I'm gonna get a small spoon and taste it, see if I have enough seasoning in there to season these greens. 
always important to check all the way through if the season is correct. Who put these dishes away? They're all mixed up. Irritating. All right. So I'm gonna get a little bit of the, the, the um, it's not gravy, the water, and I'm gonna taste it. Ooh, that stuff is sharp. It needs some salt. Where is my salt? Why am I always looking for salt? I don't know why there's a problem here. I got so much salt and I keep on finding the regular salt and I don't want that. I want the better of the salts. Here it is. Doesn't belong here, but okay. So I'm just gonna get some sea salt, not much. Put it in there, mix it in. This is going to cook. I think I'm gonna add another cup of um, broth. This is gonna cook for a minimum of two and a half hours. So be prepared to have time when you start cooking mustard greens because they're really tough and they have to cook a long time in order to be ready. All right, we're gonna cover these and they are going to cook on, a, well, I say about four just medium flame for four, excuse me, for two, minimum of two and a half hours. Then we're gonna check to see if they're done. See you then. Well, in the meantime, and in between time, we're gonna make some not your normal cornbread. This cornbread is off the hook. I don't remember how I got the recipe. All I know is my coworkers would ask me to make it and it's a lot of work, so I didn't do it for them normally, but on special occasions, like when we had um, Friendsgiving at work or um, Christmas at work, I would go ahead and make either that, or they either ask for that or the fried crab cabbage. I'd rather do the fried cabbage because that's way easier, but the guys, man, they wanted the cornbread, so I would have to do it for them. I'll show you that in just a minute. So these greens, they are basically, I'm gonna go and check them to make sure that there's enough seasoning in them for the next two and a half hours, but they're, they just have to cook. You just have to have time. It's Sunday. You're supposed to cook a Sunday dinner, Sunday quick dinner, it's never quick. So, just a second, we're gonna get to the cornbread and I'll be right back with you when I have all the ingredients for the cornbread together. Just a second, but it's gonna be a few minutes for me. <laughs> So I got my cookbook out. So not your mama cornbread. You are gonna need one cup of butter, melted. You're gonna need one cup of white sugar, four eggs, one 15 ounce can of cream corn, one, a half, a half of a four ounce cans of diced chilies. I usually put the whole can in there. Um, and you're gonna drain it, of course. You're gonna drain this. You're gonna need a half a cup of shredded Monterey Jack, a half a cup of cheddar cheese, one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of cornmeal, yellow cornmeal, okay? Um, four teaspoons of baking powder, and a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. It's a lot, right? Most of you all have most of this stuff in there. I mean, this is one cup of butter. You're gonna need two sticks of butter, right, basically. I had to find the white sugar, because you know I don't use it, but I had some in the very top of the cabinet. So I have some white sugar here. Use some eggs, sit them out on your counter so they can um, come down to temperature. Get your, this is what you're not gonna have, most likely. The cream corn, not people. I had to find this on the very bottom of the shelves in the supermarket. I was like, they don't have cream corn anymore? But it, I found it. So cream corn. Not too many people eat it, but this is per, This is 
important for this recipe. You have to have cream corn. Don't use regular corn. And then the chili, chilies, you can find that with the ketchup and the tomato sauce and in the Spanish food aisle. And of course, cheese. I already had that in the house. So basically, these two are going to be the things that you're probably going to have to add to your pantry in order to do this recipe. Let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is shred this cheese. We're going to need um, a half a cup of Monterey Jack and a half a cup of cheddar. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grate these up and I'll be right back. Just a second. So I've grated my cheese and I took my two sticks of butter and I put it in my cast iron pan. Best thing to do, you have to have melted butter. So the best thing to do is to use the butter to, so, to um, get the, you know, the oil into your pan so that your cornbread doesn't stick. So I'm still melting the butter. Don't mind me. I'm not afraid to um, burn my hands apparently. So the one cup of butter has to melt. We're gonna set our oven to 300 degrees. So I'm gonna put it on bake, 300, start. Preheat your oven. So as soon as the butter melts, we're going to get, well, I might as well go ahead and do it. We're gonna get one cup of sugar. The sugar has been around for a while, but sugar don't go bad, so. It's okay, everything is just fine. <laughs> everything is just fine. Slowly, surely, I'm getting the sugar in this bowl. <laughs> oh boy. Our greens are still going. They're gonna take a while, so. The cornbread will probably be done around the same time because you have to bake this for 50 to 60 minutes. So I got my one cup of sugar in the bowl. Let me see if this is almost ready. I almost have my butter completely melted. It's gonna take time. I don't want, you don't wanna burn your butter. You wanna do it slowly. So we have four eggs, one, two, and I use these eggshells to free feed my plants. Do not, I do not give eggshells to chickens. You don't want them to get used to eating themselves. So the four eggs, I need um, one 15 ounce can of canned corn. I'm gonna wash this thing off because I didn't, I didn't do it apparently. Get my sugar out of the way, all of the things I used out of the way. Where's my can opener? You know, the cheapest one, the one from the Dollar Tree, I think that one works the best. Uh, I, I, don't make me a liar, can opener. <laughs> but this thing was only a dollar and look, no problem. If I had take the most expensive one, I'd probably be fighting with it right now. So. That tells you something. Price doesn't mean much when it comes to getting things done and things doing what they're supposed to do. This was the can of kind of can opener that my mom would use because it had the thing where you could open, puncture it, and then you could take a lid off. It has everything on it. The other one is all bougie and nice and pretty and it don't open a can. And it certainly doesn't punch holes in cans or open lids. This I used to open my pressure can of lids. This, I open the juice can lids, and then it opens a regular can, so dollar, dollar twenty-five is a better can opener than, I'll show you, I'll show you the culprit, than this. That cost me more money. So, you know I'm talking about your can opener. So I got my uh, cream corn in here with my sugar and my eggs. Mix that up. Then I'm gonna get my can of chopped chilies. 
You see to strain it off. Ah, come on. Let me see if there's anything to strain. Strain it in the sink. And um, most of the time when I strain stuff, because this stuff is thick, I push down on the lid and then I turn it over to the side and I squeeze it to try to get as much of the liquid out as possible. So I told you I'm going to put all my chilies in. There we go. All the goodness goes in there. Mix that in. That was the sound of my oven um, preheating. To get my butter, I'm gonna get my mitt to do this because this thing is a cast iron skillet. It's a Dutch oven. Dutch oven. So let me mix that up real quick. I don't want to cook my eggs. And we're going to put our shredded cheese in there also. I'm making a mess. I don't want to lose any of my cheese. My counter is clean. Oh, you all can't see. I'm putting my cheese in there. bring it down so you can see the bowl not necessarily me so I put my eggs so I already put the cup of butter one cup of white sugar four eggs a can of cream style corn a can of chopped chilies that I drained um, a half of cup of shredded Monterey Jack and a half a cup of cheddar all of that is in here Trying to get all of the cheese in there. I don't want to cooperate. And I did the exact, I measured it, I scaled it. Four ounces, four ounces. So. And I always shred my own cheese. The cheese that they have shredded in the grocery store, if you want to use it, it's just fine. But note that they it may be sprayed with some kind of uh, plastic or something to stop it from um, sticking together. So that's a chili. Okay. So that bowl is done. That's our wet ingredients. I'll bring you back. We're going to do our dry. So for our dry ingredients, we're going to need a cup of, ooh, a cup of flour. And I have my flour here. That's one cup. A cup of yellow cornmeal. This will be easier because if I get it out of the, if I can get it out of this casing. <laughs> Pour me pour as well. You know what? I'll just scoop it out just like the flour. Make sure it's yellow cornmeal, unless you like white cornbread. That's not traditional, but it's up to you. I think yellow tastes better. It might be psychological, though. They're probably the same. Okay, one cup of cornmeal. I don't do this often because I'm having to look at my recipe quite often. So I'm going to need four teaspoons of baking powder. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to need a fourth of a teaspoon of salt. Then 
there we go. Take this spoon, I'm gonna mix it together. Okay, got my wet Greek ingredients here, right? And this is gonna be a wet cornbread. We are gonna cook it for an hour, hour and a half until it cooks. So, well, about an hour, an hour. So I'm gonna mix this in together. And you're gonna say, Jamerica, I don't think that's gonna work. That don't look like your normal cornbread. Well, this is not your mama's cornbread. I already told you that. This is a different type of cornbread. It's not your mama's. <laughs> And it's so good. So if you're on a on a um a diet, break it. The day that you break it is the day you, you do this. Cause uh you have to break your diet at least once a week after you get started for your metabolism to kick back in. You can't just stay on the diet. That's just me though. That's how I was taught. So don't pay no attention to me. I fall off. I fell off the rails apparently. So there we go. It's gonna look like this. It's gonna be a loose mixture, right? We got our skillet here, our cast iron thing, our cast iron uh, Dutch oven, and I like that sizzling sound when it's ready. Remember we um remember. We uh, melted our butter in here, so this is not going to be hard. I just don't want to get burnt. It's still warm. Okay, so I'm going to put my mixture in there. all out don't waste a thing the hardest part about this um cornbread is getting the ingredients together finding all the ingredients in your house so scoop that out and we're going to put this in the oven to 50 to 60 minutes on 300, not 350, 300. Uncovered, by the way. So I'm gonna set my timer to 50 minutes. And then I'm gonna check it. We're gonna do that toothpick check that I do with most of the stuff, most of the muffins and the cakes that I do. I haven't done any cakes for you yet, but I will. I will. So I'm going to leave that there. Let me turn this off. <laughs> I, felt, I felt heat on the back of my arm. I was like, what, what is that? Am I having a hot flash? No, I was going to burn myself. So we're going to come back in about 15 minutes. The greens are still cooking. Let's do a taste test while we're here. How about that? Make sure that there's enough season in this bad boy. I was thinking about, what was I gonna put in here? Oh, I know what I was gonna put. So my water is becoming, my broth is becoming very low. Too low for me. And I have some broth here, so I'll put some more in there. Another spoon or two in there. I don't want it to burn. So while I'm, when I'm doing that, let me mix it up. Pat it down. Let me do a taste test. So I was thinking, I want to put some of this in. You don't have to. I just think it'll make it better. I'm gonna take a normal tablespoon. This stuff is salty, so be careful with it. Put that in. Oh God. <laughs> I almost 
just lost my whole thing. All right. Calm down. Everything's all right. Everything is just fine. I'm going to mix that in. Then I'm going to retaste it with another spoon. Teaspoon. I was right. Tastes better. So we're gonna let this boil some more. By the way, I have it on three now, so it's just under medium. And I'll see you in about 50 minutes, okay? So the alarm went off for the cornbread. I'm just making sure my camera's going. <laughs> I'm just looking into the camera. You're not supposed to do that. Who says? So I got my gloves. Pull this out. And I'm going to get a pick. One of these. Stick it in the center. And it came out clean, but I think I want to do it for another 10 minutes. Yeah, it came out really clean. But I'm going to leave it in here about mm, maybe five more minutes. And I'll be right back with you. I'm going to pull it straight out because it's done. It, the skewer doesn't lie. I just, it looked a little shaky like jello to me. And I don't want it to be like that. I want it to be consistent so five more minutes so my five minutes are up turn this thing off open the oven turn it off i have a trivet here i hope that it um that it can hold this pot we'll see here we go on there. Close that back up. This cornbread looks delicious. Let me let you take a look. First, let me turn on the light and then you can take a look. Look at it. Came up off the sides and everything. Wait till it cools off and we can cut it. Our greens still aren't done. Um, we're going to take a quick look at those. Let me move this pot out the way so you can see. Running out of water again. It's a good thing I looked at it. Alexa, how much time is left on the timer? You have 13 minutes left on your two hour and 30 minute timer. We're almost done. Everything's almost cooked at the same time i guess i don't need to put this on here because there's only 13 minutes left on the timer let me spread these out and at this point if the seasoning ain't right you might as well let somebody season themselves season it the way they want to a lot of people put hot i know i put hot sauce on it you see that that's my that's just a pig it's, it's not my hair sticking up <laughs> looks funny on there so at this point i'm gonna cover it again let that last 13 minutes set in gonna let everything cool off a little bit and then we're gonna plate this is not the end of our sunday sunday dinner i have some fish over there if you all want to see the fish fry i'm gonna do it separately as a matter of fact i think i'm gonna combine them all together and um we'll combine these two together and then do separate videos for each so anyway cornbread is done cornbread is done and that's almost done so we'll see 13 minutes from now i'll show you me turning the oven off just for you know closure <laughs> just a second so our alarm went off for our mustards and they look delicious I'll taste them and see if they're completely cooked. They look completely cooked. 
Get a fork. Let's come over here with me. Over here with me. And here is the pot. Turn the surface light on. Maybe that'll give you more light. Take a little piece. Mama's little baby love. Oh, that's not the right song. Okay. Still sharp, but it's good. So good. So I turn, I'm turning that off while you all were in, you know, seconds. Make some homemade tea. I took four tea bags, four Lipton tea bags or black tea bags, and I'm making my grandmother's tea. So I'm gonna boil these while I'm frying my fish. Yeah, we're gonna fry fish too. That'll be in the next tape. See you in a sec. <laughs> So this portion is the fried fish. I've been soaking some, some frozen fish in some lemon water to clean it off. And I'm gonna pour this off. So the two, I have two types of fish in here. I have codfish, which is a firm fish. And then I have whiting. They don't look alike. See how they're different in texture? Well, they're different in looks. One is pinkish and one is white. This is cod and this is whiting. And this is whiting. So I have my fish over here. I am going to get my little teaspoon and we're gonna mix together our seasoning, right? So the first thing I got is my garlic powder. Take about a teaspoon, all right? Put that in my dish. Put you over here. I got so many things here because basically the, I'm gonna use almost the same ingredients I used for my cornbread for my, um, for my fish, almost the same. So I got my, um, my garlic powder in here, right? I'm gonna leave all this stuff out because I might wanna add more. Got some smoked paprika. And pour some of that in my spoon. About a teaspoon of that. Cayenne pepper. I don't want a teaspoon of this, I just want a little bit. About a quarter of a teaspoon of that. Onion powder. About a teaspoon of that. Then I have some Creole kick. Oh, I have used this before, okay. Creole cook slap, slap your mama. Any kind of Louisiana seasoning that you like, you can use. I might just go back and get my slap your mama because this thing has been around for a while. I like to slap your mama better. Just my preference, but I'm gonna use it because it's been there for a while. And this stuff is starting to cake together. Okay, I'm gonna mix that together, right? Ooh, the seasoning smells good. Get them all happy and joined in one happy family. Put some seasoning in my hand. That wasn't enough. Put some in my hand. I need some salt. Just a little bit though. Okay, I put about a quarter teaspoon on the counter and in my bowl. <laughs> Mix that up again. Do another taste test. My hand, use the other hand, huh? Better, way better. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna do some more Creole kick in there though. About a quarter of a teaspoon, another quarter of a teaspoon. Mix all this stuff together. So this season is gonna go into my flour and cornmeal mixture as well as on my fish. Let me do another taste. Do another taste test. That's really good. Really good. Just a little bit more salt though. I always gotta add a little bit more. Hold on. Okay, I added about a quarter more teaspoon of salt. Okay, my fish. Let me drain it off again. get so we have our seasoning together we have our fish drained off and so we can move all these bottles to the side what I have here is mustard mustard flour and cornmeal that's what's next I'm gonna get a glad bag one of the big ones where's the big one that's not a big one A cup of cornmeal. Let me make this bag into a, a tent. Because I don't want to mess. Bring it down. So, I want a cup of cornmeal. I ain't got time to be shaking and shaking. Cup. And a cup of flour. My flour is not going to come out. It's not going to cooperate, so I might as well use a spoon. Oh, turn that off. My pot is smoking. I was like, what does it smell? It's the oil. So I want about the same amount of flour as I have cornmeal, about a cup. Pour that in there, take my season, put about half of that in there, and mix it up. Instead of buying those pre-made mixes, you could do this yourself. You don't have to um, buy that stuff, especially since you would probably have cornmeal and flour in your house. Okay, let me take my finger. Not enough. Put some more season in there. I ain't got time to be mixing and mixing. I might poke a hole in my bag. <laughs> Use another finger. Still don't taste anything. So. Add a little bit more. 
And I'm gonna season the flour and I'm gonna season the fish. So I probably have to make another set of season mix in a second because what finger did I use? Okay, this hand. Oh, forget about it. Let me use this. Ah, forget about it. See, the season was not mixed. I see a whole clob of globby, 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 you'll love it. If that's a word. <laughs> Gotta mix that stuff in. I didn't want to put it in a bowl because I'm tired of doing dishes, so. What did my mommy say? Um, a lazy man will work himself to death. <laughs> if I had put it in a bowl, I probably would have been done. All right, so. Let's see. Still don't taste it. Well, I taste some of it. I'm gonna put all of it in there. And zip it up and then shake it up. Now that has got to be enough, huh? That has got to be enough. And it's changing the color. Look at the color of it now. It's not the same color that it was. It's like a yellowish beige look. Take another spoon. Drop some of it in my hand. That's good enough. So I gotta wait for my oil to um, come down, but my tea, the reason why I boil the tea bags in there is because it turns your tea super black. See that? That is done. Could turn that off. I'm gonna have sweet tea, but this is West Indian style. My grandma style. <laughs> Nothing special, it's just good. So now that my whole house is smoked up from the oil, I am going to go ahead and um, put some more season in here and put this stuff back together. So, back to the top. Back to the top. Garlic. Onion. Cayenne. Oh, shoot. Cayenne, you can't get the spoon in there. Just a little bit of cayenne. You don't, if you don't like hot, don't put the cayenne in there. Look at this mess. Everything is all over the place. You all can't see my cup either. Back. All right. Those are done. Smoked paprika. And smoked paprika, you could taste it. Creole kit. Creole kit is the star of the show, so we're gonna double that. If, you can, if I can get it out. There we are. And a little bit of salt. That's about a quarter teaspoon of salt. Mix that stuff together. Drop some in my hand. Good. All right, I'm not gonna use this whole thing on my fish. I'll probably just put it in the flour. Still got water on this flour. I need to wash my hands off and drain this fish. So let me do that. And 
I'm squeezing the fish. So I get the water out. This stuff was frozen, so it has a lot of water in it. Okay, on to the next. So I'm gonna put my seasoning in the fish about half. I'm gonna turn that around. I felt the bone too. We're gonna have to be careful eating this. I'll let everybody know. We'll make that pretty. See that right there? We'll take some mustard. I am going to put about three tablespoons of mustard in there. And all the mustard is gonna do is help um, the flour adhere to the fish. There it is, it looks like that. And no, it will not taste like mustard, I promise. Pinky swear, I gotta wait for my, um, for my heat to come down and I'll be right back with you. So I have my flour here, I'm gonna take my fish Put it in the flour. And I'm gonna shake it up, like shake and bake. Remember that? I wonder if they still make that. Shake it up to coat your fish. Now this onion is gonna stop our pan. Normally I don't use my whole green onion, but this onion is gonna give its life <laughs> to stop the house from smelling like fish. So I'm coating, shaking, and I'm coating all of the fish. Making sure all of it gets some flavor and some coating on it. All right, so let me check to see if the flour is still, I mean, the fire is still hot. I got stuff everywhere. I'm gonna put it on four. Put it on four on the high burner. I have the, the wide burner. And I'm going to take a little bit of flour, right? Put it in the pan, see if it sizzle. It sizzled. Did y'all see that? Let me do it for the people in the back. I'm going to take a little bit of flour, and it sizzles. Y'all saw that? Great. So we got our fish. Make sure it's coated. And we're going to put it in the frying pan. Take your onion. Put it in the side. More fish. More fish. And more fish. You're gonna fry it to five to for five to seven minutes on each side. Make sure this stuff doesn't cook too fast. Fish doesn't take long to cook. I'm gonna get a wire rack. Wash my wire rack off. All right, I got my wire rack. Let me put this up. Shut this down. And move my Arlo. Noisy, 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 noisy. I got my board and I got my rack. And put my dishes up. Just like fried chicken, you're gonna be able to tell when it's done. We got the rest of the fish over here. I'm gonna sit it over here. And while we're cooking, I'm gonna start putting my stuff back up. Yeah, 
good girl. All right, so putting all of this stuff back where it belongs. You know, you can never find out where you put paint out this stuff from. I mean, I can never put it back the way I found it. it never fix. Never fix. My salt that goes here. Okay, that fish is ready. I can tell by the way it sounds. That goes there. That goes there. That goes there. Uh -huh. I know I got it from here. All oh, the sugar. Sugar wasn't supposed to go there. Sugar goes way up top. Okay, I'm going to turn this over. Fire is not high enough either. I'm going to turn this over. And let me tell you something about this whiting. It don't want to act right. It's split. So there we go. I got it on five. Medium heat. I'm gonna get some paper towel to put under it so my cutting board isn't all greasy. I actually want to put it on two glasses or something so that it'll stay up. I know what I'm doing. This is not going to work out. So I'm going to jerry rig some stuff. Don't talk about me. Do not talk about me. This rack is not high enough for me, and I want it not to steam. I want crunchy fish. I don't want fish that tastes funny that tastes like that tastes like um it's soggy so i'm putting it on these seasoned dishes to make it higher do what you got to do you know all right more stuff i need to put away The tea is cooling down and this pot is super, super um, thick, so it's going to take a while for the tea to calm down. Fish is not ready. I don't know why I'm messing in with it. So we have our greens here, frying my fish, and we have our cornbread over there. Turn my shirt down. Y'all didn't tell me my shirt was all messed up? <sighs> Let me fix myself. Got to watch out for myself. <laughs> And these freezer bags. I'll figure out how to get them in this drawer because they belong here. Throw this in the back. Not done.
What a day. What a Sunday. Huh? Always cooking, always cleaning, always doing something every day. Idle time, they say, is the devil's workshop, right? The onion works. I don't smell the fish. I mean, I smell a faint smell of fish but it's pretty much taking all of that smell away. So that hack, the green onion, just stick it in the oil when you're frying the fish, it works. So this stuff is ready to come out. Drain it a little bit. Put it on my rack. Wow, this one looks hell on the ground. When I'm picking it up, I could tell the difference between the whiting and the codfish, they feel different. The codfish is way firmer. I'll leave it there for a minute more. Okay. Make sure everything has some coating on it. Take this last piece out. I'll let it sit there for a minute more because it looked like it's soggy on that end. When I was going to culinary art school, they actually had a class and he was like, he graded us on frying fish. He said that is the one of the things that you must know how to do, fry fish. And the chef, he was from Louisiana. He was a Cajun man. He, was, he would, did not play about his fish. He did not play. So let's keep on going, right? Lay another one in there. Trying to find a small peak because I've just picked up two gigantic pieces of fish. All right, let me wash my hand off. to wipe my stove down. Don't mind me, I'm just wiping everything down.
because I'm, I know that this is not going to cool down quick enough, the tea, let me move you closer. I'm gonna take that pot and I'm gonna pour it into a bowl and then we're gonna do our mixture. I have to fish, <laughs> fish, funny. I have to fish the um, tea bags out of here. So there's one tea bag. There's another one. I put four in here. And they're just Tetley tea bags. You see this? A little bit closer to you guys. So what I'm doing is I'm just fishing the Tetley tea bags out or the black tea black tea tea bags out. I'm gonna throw them in the trash. Fish is ready to come out. pieces of fish. I think it's only two in here. One. And that's two. So we have our tea here, right? What we need is some lemon juice. And my grandmother, my dear grandma, she would pour the lemon juice until she could see it. And it would turn kind of a cloudy color. She used a lot of lemon juice. She also used white sugar. So since I already have it out, might as well use it, right? Not my thing, but it was her thing. And remember those Kool-Aid commercials where the the older brother, like, you know, he was basically getting ready to be a diabetic. He just kept on pouring sugar in. That's kind of how this tea is. Really lemony and it's really sweet. Let me get a spoon. Now this is to your taste. You don't have to buy um, ready-made tea. Not enough sugar. measuring I'm just tasting it that fish is ready to turn so I'm mixing the sugar in it's super easy to get this sugar mixed in because the tea is still hot or warm. That's it. Tea is done. Let me get a picture. Yeah, I'll just use this regular little quick picture that I have. I don't get anything fancy schmancy. We're all family here. Use a Dollar Tree picture. Tea is done. I'm 
put this in the refrigerator. America doing a million things at one time. Put this away. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to use this again. I don't intend on frying any more fish. I'm going to throw it out. And that goes there. That goes there. He goes here. Fish is done. All right, let's do inventory. How about that? Inventory time. Ooh, I almost knocked the camera over. <laughs> so, there's my cornbread, right? Not your mama cornbread. There's the fried fish. And here are the mustard greens. See when I plate? You're gonna be surprised. No, you're not. You gotta know what it looked like. <laughs> I want y'all to see how this cornbread cuts like a cake. This cornbread is the best cornbread I've ever had in my life. Ever. <laughs> Did I say in my life? And I haven't had everybody's cornbread. I think there's a Cajun one out there. I haven't tried that one yet, but we'll see. I don't want to make it and then it's not as good as this one. I think it, it, I don't think it'll be bad. I just, I don't know. This one is just good. Oh, I can't get it out. Let me see. Let me get this. Get that spatula. Get it all the way. It's not stuck to the bottom. It's just. Just giving me the blues, that's what it's gonna do. Should've just taken the whole thing out. And here's our fish.
Okay, there you have it. Not your mama cornbread. And I'm telling you, oh my gosh, y'all gotta see me eat this because I'm in heaven. <laughs> I'm, in love. I'm in love with the cornbread. The rest of the stuff is good, but the cornbread is hitting. And I already know because I've made it like a million times. I don't make it that often though because then I'd be, you know, two of me. <laughs> so here it is. Bring you down. Bring the camera up and down. So here we are. Of course, I'm going to take the cornbread first. That is so good. Fish time. That's good too. Everything is seasoned well. The fish is crunchy. It's not overwhelming. And it's perfect. Thank you all for being with me. This is Sunday's dinner. Please like and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.